everyone, what's going on? My name is Danielle, nice to meet ya. And if you're new, subscribe, click that subscribe button down below and join the Dan fam. So today, it is a Saturday and I have no homework and I'm so happy. And I decided to stand up for this video because I have a lot of energy and no, I haven't had any coffee today. I pride myself in that, pat on the back, yep, yep, yep. So today, in honor of me not having homework, I'm gonna film a video about homework. <laughs> You guys are always asking for me to film more videos about how to stop procrastination, how to be more productive, because I like to think of myself as a pretty productive person. I'm, I'm on my ish, I like to get things done, and I also like to enjoy my life at the same time. So I've been really working on that lately. So I have five tips for you guys on how to stay productive and stop procrastination, because it's real. It's a real thing, and we need to stop it. Hashtag stop procrastination 2016. Let's start it now. <laughs> so I just uh, have some tips here that I've written down. I was just like, what do I do to stop procrastinating? And I literally just wrote those down and I was like, oh, that's gonna be fun. So tip number one is break it down. Break it, break it. <laughs> if I have like a really big project to do or like a research paper that I actually have due coming up or like some special project or a video or whatever it is, you need to break it down. Break it down. I can't stop doing that <laughs> into smaller tasks and I mean like really tiny tasks like one day you might sit down and you might write the title of your paper or you might get like three sources for your paper like three websites that you know are gonna be perfect or you know just think of the topic because you can't even start something unless you know what you're gonna write about these are tasks that you can accomplish these are tasks that you can do these are tasks that are gonna feel great when you have them on your planner and then you mark them off saying that you did them it's gonna feel really good and it's gonna inspire you to keep going so I have this research paper coming up yesterday I sat down and I said okay I'm gonna do this topic and I'm gonna talk about these three points and then maybe you know tomorrow I'll sit down and I'll look at sources that I'm going to use to talk about those three points and then the next day I'll start writing the first point and then the second point and then just start working from there. I just think that's a really good way to do it and it also just makes you feel so freaking good because you're just like ah like I literally write it down on my to-do list like pick a topic and then it feels so good to mark it off and you feel like you're progressing forward rather than just procrastinating and not wanting to write that paper. Tip number two is to put public pressure on yourself. This works for me because if I have other people that I need to please or if I have other people involved in the project that I'm doing, I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I don't want anyone to get upset at me. People are relying on me. Like, I need to do my part. And that's just personally how I work. I know I get frustrated if I'm working with someone else and they're not holding up their part and they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing because it's like, hey, like we agreed on this. So like I understand that. So when it's put on me, like I know that like other people are depending on me, so I know I need to do it. So you can do this in a couple different ways. You could tweet like sometimes I'll do this I'll be like guys if you see me on Twitter tell me to get off Twitter because I need to be doing homework or like promise someone that you're gonna have something done at a certain time so that they're relying on you and they're waiting for that email from you or they're waiting for that text or whatever it is saying that you're done and that they can go on with their their end of the project or whatever it is like just put public pressure on yourself because then you're like oh my gosh I don't want to make anyone mad like I'm gonna do my things so they can do theirs too so tip number three I have to put it in coffee okay and I mean this in a couple different ways if you don't like coffee go for some tea but for some reason when I drink coffee, I just feel so darn productive. I don't know what it is. There's something about just sipping coffee makes me feel like, oh, I can do anything. I can conquer the world. I'm not even kidding you. And not just coffee or not just tea. I'm saying go somewhere new. So like I'll be sitting at my desk and I love my desk. It's so cute, right? It's like a cute little area. But after a while, it's like I'm getting tired of sitting here and sitting here. So I'll t put my stuff in a bag, take myself to Starbucks or a cute coffee shop or my friend's house, like wherever it is, just change your settings up so it makes you feel more productive, it makes you feel more wanting to do things rather than just sitting in one place for like a really long time. My fourth tip is to overcome your fears because I know a lot of times I'll procrastinate because I'm too scared to start something. I'm like, I'm just gonna get a bad grade on this anyways. Like, what's the point of me putting all this work in or whatever it is? What is helping you by thinking that? There's nothing. You have to, I mean, you can sit there and be like, okay, like none of this is gonna happen. Like, I'm just so upset. Or you can actually do it and get somewhat of a good grade, right? Like if you sit there and decide not to study at all, you're gonna get a really bad grade. If you study, you at least get a couple more points, right? Like for me, it's you have to be in the right mentality and it's sometimes really hard to get in that mentality. So you gotta fake it till you make it. If you don't feel great, just say she believed she could, so she did. And then just go for it. Just go in head forward, you got this. 
Lastly is what I like to call the airplane hack, which I think is really cool and I think it should be infused in our studying habits a lot more. I'm someone, if I'm studying, I can't be on my phone. I mean, I try not to be on my phone. If I know it's something really serious, I literally just put my phone on airplane mode and treat myself as if I was on an airplane. Like when I'm on an airplane, like I never get the Wi-Fi because I'm just like, eh, it's not worth it. You have to pay. It's only like a two hour flight. Like why would I do that? So I put my phone on airplane mode and when you're on an airplane and there's no service or no Wi-Fi, you tend to either sleep, read a book, or like do work. And I know a lot of people when I go on the planes, I'm always seeing people like doing work. So pretend you're on an airplane, put your phone on airplane mode, put your your computer off of Wi-Fi, and just do your work. So that's all I got today for my five procrastination hacks and just how to be protective. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. It was honestly a nice reminder for myself, and now I feel like I can just really just go and do anything. Um, but yeah, please comment down below if this video was helpful for you. I hope it was, um, because that's why I made this video, and not just to do it for fun, because scratch the head. Uh. <laughs> Anyways, I love you guys incredibly much. Don't ever forget it. Thanks for being a part of the Dan fam, and if you aren't yet, <clears throat> subscribe down below. If the button is red that you're looking at down below, 